Welcome to All About the Sisters Wellness Podcast, where we help you reclaim your overall health and wellness. Get informed, take action, and be better at being well. I'm Melanie Painter, founder of All About the Sisters, and your host. As a Black woman, I've been blessed with good skin. I get it from my mama. And I also come from a family with a long line of women with beautiful skin. My mom aged very gracefully and looked almost 15 years younger than her actual age. At 70 years when she passed, she was beautiful. No excessive wrinkles or crow's feet. I'm so happy to have inherited that good skin legacy. As a teenager, I didn't suffer from acne, only around the time of my period, which was short-lived, of course. And I was super grateful for that because many of my friends had severe acne issues and suffered from outbreaks, which was not good if you were trying to avoid being a target for bullying and name-calling. Gosh, children can be so cruel. But anyway, I never really knew the woman in my family to have a dedicated skincare regimen. But then again, those were very different times. Back then, they ate less processed food and sought out organic homemade remedies. Today, we are dealing with such things like climate and environmental changes and ozone depletion. I grew up learning that to get your daily dose of vitamin D, you spend time in the sun. So I was outside most of the time. The body naturally produces vitamin D in response, to the, in response to the skin's exposure to sunlight. What I was not aware of until recently is that people with darker skin pigmentation, like African Americans, are at greater risk for vitamin D deficiency and insufficiency because the higher presence of melanin reduces the body's ability to produce vitamin D. So essentially, we need to take our supplements. And I will be honest, I have taken my skin for granted. But I am learning as I get older that even if black don't crack, I have to be vigilant about caring for my skin. During the pandemic, I ramped up my vitamin D use to build my immunity and noticed my face look more youthful and bright. I made a note to myself that I have to pay more attention to what my body needs. We have to find other ways of maintaining healthy skin through the foods we eat and the products we use. This is why I wanted to talk to my friend Glenise of Skin Ethics. I wanted to investigate how good and necessary sunscreen is and how to zero in on products that are good for my black skin. With so many products out there touting greatness for black skin, I don't know about you, but I'm always hella confused when I go to Sephora or other big brand beauty stores in search of a good moisturizer for my dry skin. How could I tell one from the other? And do I need a daily skincare regimen? Why? And which brands truly care about me and my skin and not just about putting money in their pockets? All of these questions are what I had. And in this quick interview with Glenise, we touch on all the necessary skincare tips we need to be aware of as we continue to take better care of our skin as black women. Our guest today is Glenise Gomez. Glenise hails from the Caribbean island of Trinidad and Tobago. She migrated to the U.S. with hopes of commencing a nursing career. She soon discovered that it was difficult to emotionally detach herself from the medical elements, and so she transferred her zeal to study aesthetics. For 15 years, she has been titled as a New York State licensed esthetician, laser technician, and master skincare therapist. Glenise is also a New York State certified aesthetic educator. She is a member of the Medical and Aesthetics Association, Aestheticians and Skin Professionals, and the Day Spa Association. Glenise has been employed at many major medical spas, where she directed for close to a decade and co-authored an inspirational anthology for entrepreneurs. Skin Ethics was awarded Best of NYC 2015 in two categories for community diversity and inclusion and environment. Glenise spends time monitoring and coaching small businesses and how to launch their startups and thrive in the fast evolving beauty industry. Welcome, Glenise. We are so happy to have you here on the All About the Sisters Wellness Podcast. Skin looks healthy as usual. How have you been? Doing good. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. So let's jump right in. You're a licensed esthetician and skincare maven. That's what I call you. Tell us about your journey into skincare. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, I am a licensed esthetician. I've been practicing aesthetics for the past 15 years, been in the industry for 20 years. 
And I am from a family of medical professionals, and they tried getting me into nursing school. I ran away from it. I ran so far, got into aesthetics, um, did, a, did an aesthetics course, loved it, fell in love with it. And then right when I graduated, I got into medical aesthetics, which was the same thing I was avoiding, <laughs> working with a plastic surgeon with Westchester Plastic Surgery Associates, and then working in a medical spa. So even though I was avoiding nursing, I still got a right back into the same realm. Mm, it's in your blood, apparently. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so Skin Ethics is the name of your company. I love it. What's the story behind the name? Sounds like, sounds very much like I have to be ethical about my skin, yes? Yes, we need to be ethical about everything and have integrity about everything. I um, The first decade of my aesthetics career was a boom. It, I, it took off quickly. I had such a great job. I worked with a large company. There were 11 locations um, in the U.S. And um, it was great. The money was really, really good. The clientele were great. Um, I worked with a lot of lasers and a lot of plastic surgeons, and I was expected to sell $5,000, $10,000 packages to clientele. Like we had our quota, and unfortunately, a couple of our clients had immunodeficiency diseases, lupus, diabetes, etc. And of course, with my morale and principles that were inbred in me, I could not even fathom treating someone and having to deal with the contraindications of them taking medication or having um, an adverse effect. I refused the sale. My boss wasn't very happy about it. And I chose to, you know, keep my integrity and maintain, you know, my good ethics. So I left the company. Um, my dad passed away. I grieved for a while, started working on blending skincare products for my younger sister who has lupus and diabetes and sickle cell anemia, I tell you, these are the things that we go through. And this is, these are the concerns that I had. We started blending together. Skin Ethics was born and it's really been helping a lot of people. We've, I've owned Skin Ethics for five, a little bit more than five years. And it has been a wonderful journey assisting others. Uh, We've received a few um, awards from New York City. We worked with uh, unlock your dream sponsoring their events and being honored by them for entrepreneurship a couple other honors and mentions worked with some really really awesome companies bmp parabas bank small business association business outreach center it's really really been a wonderful wonderful journey that sounds amazing wow so you would always deem to get into something like this anyway um i think and you're doing well at so. it yeah. Thank you. Or else I would just be like out in the Caribbean <laughs> with an apothecary, just planting herbs and <laughs> that could still happen. Though. Making tinctures. That, that, that is a, still that's, happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you custom blend a myriad of skincare products. What makes your company different from larger brands out there? Well, what makes us different and what keeps us at the level that we're at being small is because we focus on personal relationship. We don't care for the big limelight. We just want to focus on having radiant, glowing, luminous, healthy skin for each of our clients. And so we customize our skincare according to who you are and your skin type. So if you are averse or allergic to a specific ingredient, whether it be lavender, whether it be frankincense, whether it be seaweed, those are the items that we would eliminate from your formulation. And then we would create according to what is best for you. So according to your condition, we'll find uh, ingredients, plant-based ingredients that would be able to alleviate those conditions. And then if you may have an allergy such as seaweed, we would avoid utilizing seaweed, etc. I'm allergic to seaweed. So whether you want it or not, you're not going to have it in your product. Right. So. We just customize according to what your base needs are. Okay, so I have typically dry skin. Well, maybe I have combination skin, but I'm really dry here in the T-zones. I notice that a lot. So I come to you, walk me through what, what that process would look like. Well, it's great that you asked that because usually no one is allowed to purchase products. Usually if I see you have products in your cards or if you're interested in products, I usually ask what is your 
your concern, what's the main reason, and offer you a consultation for that. So first we would go over skin analysis, what are the products that you're utilizing currently, because that might be the cause of your dehydration, or it might be the cause of the condition that you're currently experiencing. Um, the skincare products that you're using could probably cause more damage than good. So we'll review that. I'll have you bring in your skincare products. We'll talk about ingredients together. Then we'll do a skincare analysis so that we could determine if what we see is accurate. And then we build a skincare regimen from then on. So it's all curated for you, your skincare regimen that you use from Skin Ethics at home. And then we also offer facial services. So whether we need to do a microdermabrasion, a chemical peel, put you on a skincare regimen that you can come in for a professional a couple of times a month um, or seasonally, and then you do your maintenance at home. Ah, sounds like I have to schedule an appointment soon. <laughs> you are always welcome, Melanie. Because <laughs> I did use the products maybe like three or four years ago, and I, I love the products. I actually Thank did. Thank you. So I want to jump into something that's happening now. We've been home for about four months. Some of us haven't been outside for a total of three months, except for the occasional hour or two per day. What is really happening to our skin as we're inside? And what can we do to help? With it. Well, we're experiencing stress. It's immense stress. Um, so the world is experiencing trauma together. Mm -hmm. And I feel that's why we're all experiencing um, the effects of it, regardless of our skin type, regardless of our race. We're inside, we're contained. Uh, we're not getting the oxygen that we, that our body needs. We're not getting the sunlight that our body needs. And most importantly, we are stressed. So that affects the body's adrenal system, uh, parasympathetic system. It affects our hormonal development. And all of that is just the skin being in chaos. Our body internally is in chaos, and that's going to show up on the skin. So that would show up as dehydration. That would show up as hormonal breakout. That will show up as irritation. And then when you think about the PPE on top of it, the mask on top of it, we're extremely congested. One, because we're not getting the appropriate oxygen that's necessary. So there's that congestion. Mm -hmm. And two, also because bacteria breed breeds in dark, dirty places that doesn't have a lot of oxygen. Bacteria is anaerobic. So they're going to thrive in that environment that we are sweating, that we're brooding out carbon dioxide. Like that's the perfect environment for bacteria to try to thrive, especially staff. So that's why we're experiencing breakout, irritation, redness, cuts and bruises. Like our essential workers are so distressed by their skin. Some of them are going to have to deal with hyperpigmentation for many, many years to come just because of these masks. So we're, we're experiencing extreme stress. So to alleviate that, we need to calm our skin. We need to tr treat our skin with gentler products. We need to stay as hydrated as possible. And we need to take care of the immune system so that we could avoid all of that. Okay. And, uh, as you talked about products, as we move into products, I use petroleum jelly for the most part during the winter and then very minimally during the summer because my, but my skin isn't as dry. And it really works for me. I've tried other things and they haven't really worked. And I'm, you know, I found something that works. Is this, is petroleum jelly okay, first of all? <laughs> yes. Petroleum, this is so controversial. It is extremely controversial. And I'm going to get into a lot of trouble for saying this, but it's my opinion. Um, petroleum jelly is organic. It comes from the earth. Uh, well, not the jelly. The petroleum jelly is actually refined, but it's from the earth. And um, according to what the use is for, it's dependent on the skin type and it's dependent on the purpose for it. Petroleum jelly is occlusive. It's going to cause a seal or a barrier. And what that seal or the barrier is going to do is keep the element out and keep the hydration in. Umbrellas are made from petroleum jelly. works the same way on the petroleum. It works the same way on the skin. So what we don't want to get in is going to stay out, and what we don't want to get out is going to stay in. So if you're using it for a scar, an abrasion, or just to hydrate the skin, petroleum jelly is fine. Uh, however, when we have situations such as acne um, or folliculitis or something that's going to clog the pores, like something that we need our pores to like, escape or we need, our, we need the ability for our skin to detox itself, then petroleum jelly may cause more harm than good. But 
for specific uses, yeah, it's not it's not that bad. Our body naturally is at, you know acclimatized to products that are plant based as opposed to more so like animal based or inorganic material. But yep, you can use it. Okay. For now. <laughs> 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 what about sunscreen as we get back outside? Do we need it? Yeah, we all need sunscreen. Um, sunscreen is good for all skin types because we want to minimize um, we want to minimize the risk of gaining cancer. So lighter skin types may you may see it more so on the face or on the back, etc. But darker skin types we would experience skin cancer on the loose so the palms of the hand the sole of the feet, sometimes even um, retinol. You might see it in the eyes, um, cancer. So you, we must wear sunscreen to minimize the risk of that. Mm-hmm. Lighter skin types have a higher risk. Darker skin types would have a lower risk because our bodies, we do, according to the, to the melanin, we do have some natural SPF factor, but we definitely need it topically to block the rays or to reflect the rays. And about how much SPF would you recommend? 50 minimum would co- would protect your skin, would give you a 95% protection rate. Uh, if you are more so active, like say you're cycling or you are um, a swimmer or you're a golfer especially, then I would suggest something that would be more so higher, like a 50. And you would definitely need to reapply it according to how long you're outside and according to how fast you burn. You would need to reapply it. Or if you're in the water and out of the water, you would need to reapply it when you come out of the water because the water, um, it, it may dissipate into the water. What about people who work on computers? Do we also need... Yeah, it was one of the situa- what it was one of the things that we had to educate clients on during the pandemic because blue light is close is in close spectrum to ultraviolet rays and um, it could cause damage. It causes like the same damage as aging UV aging rays. So it's it's extremely important that we use SPF even in the daytime, even if we're inside. Because those blue rays do it, it can cause harm. It can cause harm, um, and no one wants to age faster than they need to. So sunscreen is important to utilize inside as well. It's just when you're using it inside, we need to remember to remove it thoroughly at nighttime because we don't want to have that film on the surface of the skin at nighttime when the skin needs to replenish. Okay. So I want to touch a little bit on expense because as we've been talking, it seems to me that. It, it costs to take care of your skin a little bit. Um, and it, it seems expensive, I should say, to take care of your skin. What if I cannot afford a range of products? What should I, what should I be doing at a bare minimum to take, yeah. to take care of your skin? Mm-hmm. Sorry. Uh, bare minimum, you should be cleansing the skin. You should be exfoliating the skin or treating the skin. And you should be wearing a moisturizer. Um, And your life could be made much easy with just those three steps because you could combine an exfoliant with a cleanser. Your cleanser could have exfoliating ingredients. Your treatment could could have exfoliating ingredients, et cetera. So it it depends on the ingredients that you're using. For some expense, skincare is definitely an investment. It's sort of like, are you going to stay in the middle of the grocery store and just utilize the packaged products that are fortified Mm -hmm. and get minimum nutrition as opposed to staying on the perimeter of the supermarket and purchasing like high polyphenol, high antioxidant fruits and vegetables that you're going to get more nutrient content from. So that's a, that's a good analogy with regards to skincare because you, it could definitely get expensive. It really could. But as long as you understand ingredients and benefits from it, reading the label in a skincare of a skincare product, just like you would read a label of a product that you would consume, mm-hmm. that would be beneficial. So understanding that how the ingredients are listed and what the ingredients are for would be beneficial. There are a range of products that we see at 
you know, the outlets like Sephora and these these places. And I, I'm, I'm going to assume that not a lot of people pay much attention. They, they We follow, we live in a, a social media type of world where if we see a celebrity use something, we want to use it too. And I know there are dangers in that. And we can touch on that a little bit. But how do you, if, I walk, if we walk into a Sephora, for those listening, how do you choose a product? How do you know which product is best for you, even if you just have, you know your type of skin, your skin is oily or your skin is dry. Do I just pick something that, you know, how do I, yeah. how do I know how to choose? Or people pick according to the packaging, like they like the packaging, so they're going to choose the packaging. <laughs> or like you, you, you're using the product, not the bottle. <laughs> or influencers, like you say, and that touches quite a, a sore point in me because um, it sort of like mitigates or diminishes the worth of a professional. If I see, see you doing some plumbing, Melanie, I'm not going to follow your directions with how you're going to fix that. But knowing that engineer, then I'll say, oh, I'm going to follow what she's doing to fix that because you would understand the semantics of it. With regards to department stores over the counter, it could be very, very overwhelming walking into um, – a service area and finding all of these products and not knowing how to choose. Um, a lot of the times, the same product that's in a high-end department store and that could be at Sephora or all the way low ball in the grocery store could actually be manufactured. It could be the same formula. It could be the same product, just in different packet packaging because of marketing. Right. Or if you're going to self-diagnose, what I would suggest is that you understand um, – the viscosity of a product. So if you have a heavier skin type, like an oilier skin type, a thicker, denser type of skin, and you're oily, you're shiny, right? During the day, you're prone to break out, etc. Then you should probably get lighter products so that it, one, it wouldn't clog your pores. Two, it'll cleanse you a little bit more properly. The sulfates and the chemical makeup is a little bit different as opposed to if you're a drier type, if you use a cleanser for, a, for an oily type, that's going to dry you out and make your skin sensitive because it's going to deplete your moisture and break down your acid mantle. That's going to make you more prone to irritation. So if you're a drier type, that's when you're going to veer towards the heavier product, like more hydrating products, more moisturizing products, like your thicker creams, like your richer, more luxurious products would be better for a drier skin type. And we want to encourage people to purchase from Skin Ethics. So tell us what products you have available right now. We have a myriad of skincare products that you could purchase base blends or if you would like to have a product customized because you have a specific ailment or condition or you would like a specific like aroma profile that we can customize product a specific product for you so we touch on both demographics um basic cleansing cleansers toners moisturizers and then we have our best sellers like our walnut spice exfoliant which is a shea butter base and i've blended a lot of cinnamon and cloves cardamoms like caribbean spices just increase stimulation Mm -hmm. bring about all over luminance to the skin that's uh one of our best sellers we have a couple moisturizers and then we have our body products so there's um sulfate free shower gel that is multi-purpose. I like my products that I could use them for multiple uses. So a lot of the face and body products you could use for your hair and on your body also. So there's a myriad of um there's a myriad of SKUs that you there are that you could choose from. Okay, good. And where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on the website. Right now we're doing some really wonderful sales because we are reformulating some products and we're going to clear out inventory. So if you want to take advantage of that, that would be great. Um, Our website is www.skinethics.com. Skin Ethics is spelled S-K-I-N-E-T-H-I-K-S. And then all of our handles, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn is all via Skin Ethics. 
Okay, thank you guys. Now you all know where to find her. Don't tell me you never heard of her because we're definitely going to be putting her out there. Just another avenue for people to tap into skin ethics and everything that Glenise offers. So Glenise, this was such a wonderful chat. I thank you. It was a short, quick chat, but I thank you for coming on, for agreeing to come on and really educate us a little bit about what we should be doing in this time and going forward. And definitely I will be adopting a skincare mm-hmm. regimen because I definitely don't have one. So we'll look out for a call Thanks, for me. Because I definitely need to analyze what's going on here. Me, yes, me, no. and, my, me and my petroleum jelly. <laughs> <laughs> Not too much going on, but let's minimize that petroleum jelly and get you on some fortifying products. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thanks for being on. <laughs> I'm Melanie Painter, and I thank you for listening. For more about All About the Sisters, please go to www.allaboutthesisters.com or check us out wherever you listen to your podcasts. Want to know more about our guests? Check the description of this episode down below.